Well, let's talk about the government. Uh, when uh, Meloni came on came on power, every, I was concerned about the fact that she was coming from a real extreme right position. And, you know, I, I don't share that particular political idea, so it, there was a certain amount of concern. On the other side, as demonstrated by the fact that whenever people enter into the room with the levers, they do have to converge a little bit toward a different position. And this is what Meloni did. I think that she has done, she has taken a lot of initiatives that are going to be good initiatives for Italy. I think that she, uh, she picked up from uh, Mario Draghi the playbook that Mario established and she continued, which is great, it's fantastic. The only thing that disappointed me was the fact that for somebody that is coming from the right spectrum of the policy to decide at a certain point to put a tax penalty on the income of the banks, even if it is a very large amount, doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. So for that I didn't particularly, that part of her decision making didn't particularly like. But on the other side I would say that for the time being might not be an A+, plus, but let's say is an A-, minus B+, plus, something That's like that. That's a very high mark. I had the most marks I got at school. Uh, in terms of the general economy, um, interest rates are elevated, set to be more elevated if the ECB carries on with its hawkish stance as well. Italy will always be susceptible while it has such a large sovereign debt. Absolutely. On the other side, uh, as I said other times, we cannot look at the economy of Italy as just one single entity. We have to look at Italy in the old part of Europe because by now these economies, the European economies are so integrated together that everything is interconnected. So now the concern that I have, which is probably more important than whatever happens in Italy as far as Europe is concerned, is the fact that Germany is definitely slowing down. You know, the most recent data about uh, production, the industrial data yeah. of manufacturing have been negative kind of data. And that for Germany, that is really the biggest engine for growth that we have in Europe is not a very good sign. Um, we will see. Germany is slowing down in part because some of its customers are slowing down. And the biggest customer in town this century has been China. Yep. Karen and I have been speaking so much about China to so many guests. And, and I've got to say, if there was a scorecard, it would be 90% negative, 10% positive, or 10% looking through the negativity to see some positivity. Where are you? Because at the moment, I'm really struggling to see how we get back to growth trajectory of someone who is of 5% plus in China. You see, Steve, I've been uh, chairman of the board of a company, a specialty chemical company, for the past eight years. It's a European company? It's a global company. Right. It's based in Germany, headquartered in Germany, but it is a global company. Assets and people, organization, all over the world. And this company, for me, has always been a very interesting bellwether as far as the economy is concerned. We knew in January that China was in serious trouble, troubles because the sales all of a sudden disappeared from the map. Disappeared? Disappeared. You know, they went from a certain amount to a fraction of that amount. And I think that the Evergrande problem that we see, that we have seen uh, recently, is just the tip of the iceberg of something that is much more, much bigger malaise. You know that data, economic data of China are slowly disappearing from the communication. That means that things are not going very well. Uh, the youth, employment, youth unemployment data disappeared completely. So China is in serious problems, and I'm not so sure that this try to isolate the problem like Xi Jinping and the leadership of China are doing is going to be a good solution. As a matter of fact, what they should, they should open up, declare what the problem is, and work together with the global community in order to try to solve the problems. Because, as you said, the biggest customer that we have is still China for many, many of the countries. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.